in these rules can we hold the speaker accountable for abusing constitutional rights and misapplying the rules based off of a member's skin color as opposed to treating every member in this body as an equal member? You can, you can boo, but the truth will be told That's today. That's out of order. That's out of order. Next, Leader Lambert. I heard time after time after time after time again in the spring, we only have two options. We can censure somebody or we can expel them. This body chose to expel people because it couldn't follow the rules. So what you're saying is we've adopted new rules to give this body additional options, which they didn't have months ago. And those on the other side of our are complaining that we actually gave them what they asked for. Is that what I'm understanding? Representative Garrett. That's, that's exactly right. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You sat down. We're already starting off on the wrong foot. These rules talk about ruling a member out of order and silencing their voices, but my question is where in the rules can we find a process to hold the speaker out of order when he misapplies the rules to members? Where in these rules can we rule the speaker out of order when he shuts off members' microphones so they have to bring a megaphone to the House floor? Where in these rules can we hold the speaker accountable when he pushes members to the back so we have to walk up to the front of the well? You can, you can boo, but the truth will be told That's today. That's out of order. That's out of order. Next, Leader Lambert. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The speaker and every member on this floor is accountable under the exact same rules that the rest of us are. Thank you. Representative Mitchell, you're recognized. Sorry, sir, you're out of order. Representative Mitchell. Yeah. Representative Mitchell, your time's starting. For you to, to silence someone else just because you don't want to hear it, you don't want to defend, you know, to defend your position because sometimes, let's be honest, your positions sometimes are defenseless. And to do that for an attorney to stand up there before us and say this sort of thing is it, comical. It, it's really comical. But I do have another question since, you know, I'm glad the representative from the plateau area brought up we can't bring in any signs, you know, so we can't bring any signs in here. We can't bring any signs into committees. So I'm, I'm just want to verify, can, we, can, can people still bring guns into committees? I, I ask quite, can we still bring guns into Cordell Hall and into committee rooms? You know, there's a lot to what the representative from Davidson County just said. And what makes us Americans, what makes us Tennesseans? It's the, the rule book. The rule book is our constitution that we agree to abide by. It only works if we agree to those rules and abide by that as Tennesseans and Americans. Under Rule 18, who makes the decision whether a member's remarks fall, fail to strictly conform to the question under debate? Representative Garrett. The body. Chairman Clemens. Who puts that vote to the body? Representative Garrett. Be excuse me, Mr. the speaker will put the vote on the board for whether or not the ruling of being out of order is sustained. That'll be a vote on the board. Chairman Clemens. And that is an objection made from the body or from the speaker? Representative Garrett. That is, that is actually the procedure that the rules promulgate. So it's not a choice of the speaker. That is what the rules say, that it has to go on the board. Chairman Clemens. Okay, and then there's um, my, my previous colleagues have expressed their displeasure with which I strongly agree as to silencing the bo voices of their constituents for a certain amount of days and time for being ruled out of order, whether by the speaker or by this body. Explain to me how three days, six days, or any of those specified amounts of time were decided upon. Representative Garrett. For one, let's, let's be clear. We have rules here that we're voting on. If a member decides to break the rules, they are silencing themselves, not this house. They are silencing themselves by breaking the rules. What came out of that three, six, eight day was the deliberation of the rules committee. Chairman Clemens. Three, six, regardless of how much time specified, it seems quite arbitrary. So I want to know how three days versus six days versus whatever amount of time was decided upon. Representative Garrett. That was deliberation from the Rules Committee. Chairman Clemens. 
So what exactly is the compelling governmental interest in silencing over 70,000 Tennesseans' voices by an arbitrary decision of this speaker or this body voting along political lines for an arbitrary amount of time? What's that compelling governmental interest? Leader Lambert. Well, that's a complete mischaracterization of what this is. No one is silenced. Anybody can step right outside of this chamber, say whatever they want to the news. They can make any type of video and put it on social media. They can make any kind of statement. They can say anything you want to. Any member in here can. But when you're on this floor, there are rules that we have to abide by. Thank you. I'm not sure that qualifies as a compelling governmental interest um, in restricting the free speech of the people who are elected to represent their 70,000 plus constituents on this floor and what they were elected to do. And it certainly doesn't seem like the least restrictive means of, com of, of achieving your desired goal or your stated goal. Um, so I think we're going to have issues with that should this ever be challenged in a court of law. Second of all, you know, it's interesting that my, my colleague from Shelby County harkened back to the days of the American Revolution because I don't see in these rules changes any rules with regard to access to this Capitol or this galleries. And, you know, the, the father of the revolution, Sam Adams, one of his first things he did as a member of the Massachusetts legislature after they defeated the Stamp Act was to build galleries in the state legislature to be transparent and open to the people. We have limited participation and transparency in this government without even adopting so much as a rule formally to do so. And it's no coincidence that people are on the left and the special interests are on the right of the gallery.